Hello, welcome everybody to the second episode of Storytime with Miss O'Donnell. Um, I'm here today with uh, the people who wanted to hear a story. This is my dog, Fizzy, and my daughter's cat, one of two, uh, Coco. So we don't know if uh, the other cat, Grizabella, will join us or not. I am reading Make Way for Ducklings today. I want to tell you a little bit about Robert McCloskey. Um, he's from Ohio and uh, he moved out to Boston for college. After he finished school and college, he came up to Maine, where I am now, and uh, lived in Deer Isle and, um, and eventually died at the ripe old age of 88 um, after writing wonderful books, some of which are uh, Homer Price and its sequel, Canterbury Tales, tells the story of a little boy, obviously named Homer Price, who lives in Ohio. And uh, then when he came to Boston, he heard a story about these ducklings on the frog pond in Boston, in the garden there. And he wrote Make Way for Ducklings, which, although you can't tell from this cover, won the Caldecott Award um, for illustrations and the story. Um, so with no further ado, I'm going to read Make Way for Ducklings. Hope you enjoy it. Mr. and Mrs. Mallet were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mallet saw what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There was sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water. And she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on and on. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. The very place to spend the night, quacked Mr. Mallard. So down they flapped. Next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond, but they didn't find much. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer. But the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water, so the Mallards followed them all around the pond and got another breakfast, better than the first. I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard, as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But, look out, squawked Mrs. Mallard, all of a dither. You'll get run over. And when she got her breath, she added, this is no place for babies with all those horrid things rushing about. We'll have to look someplace else. So they flew over Beacon Hill and around the state house, but there was no place there. They looked in Louisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. Then they flew over the Charles River. This is better, quacked Mr. Mallard. That island looks like a nice quiet place and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks like just the right place to hatch ducklings. This is called the Salt and Pepper Bridge. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. And only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones grew in. But of course they could swim. And one day they swam over to the park on the riverbank and there they met a policeman 
called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts, and after that, the mallards called on Michael every day. After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go to visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off of the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. One day, the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Cack, and then Lack, then Mac, and Knack, and Whack, and Pack, and Quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings, and it kept them very busy. One day, Mr. Mallard decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like further on. So off he set. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Mrs. Mallard. I know all about bringing up children. And she did. She taught them how to swim and dive. She taught them to walk in a line, to come when they were called, and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, come along children, follow me. Before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack fell into line just as they had been taught. Mrs. Mallard led the way into the water and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. There they waded ashore and waddled along until they came to the highway. Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack, went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled back again. Quack, 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 went Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack, just as loud as their little quackers could quack. The cars kept speeding by and honking, and Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on quack, quack, quacking. Would you like to come join us? Come on, Isabella. Maybe she will, maybe she won't. They made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. He planted himself in the center of the road raised one hand to stop the traffic and then beckoned with the other, the way policemen do. I'm sorry, kids. My daughter just threw the cat in my way. Sorry. He planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand to stop the traffic and then beckoned with the other, the way policemen do for Mrs. Mallard to cross over. As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his police booth. He called Clancy at headquarters and said, there's a family of ducks walking down the street. Clancy said, family of what? Ducks, yelled Michael, send a police car, quick. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned into Charles Street with Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack all marching in line behind her. Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, well now, ain't that nice? And when Mrs. Mallard heard them, she was so proud she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was the police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could march across the street. Right on into the public garden. 
Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman. The policeman smiled and waved goodbye. When they reached the pond and swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. All day long, they follow the swan boats and eat peanuts. And when night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. The end. I hope you've enjoyed Make Way for Ducklings today. Um, if you are ever in Boston, you can see that bridge that's called the Salt and Pepper Bridge because it looks like it's Salt and Pepper Shakers. Um, you can also see uh, the Charles River flows under the Salt and Pepper Bridge. But most importantly, there's a wonderful sculpture um, in bronze of all the ducklings and their mother at the entrance to the Boston um, Common there. I think it's on Charles and Beacon Street, that corner right there. Make sure you see it because it's lovely. Thank you. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Stay well.